Today I want to talk about the golden child and their role in the narcissistic family dynamics. Um, I went on vacation not long ago with my sister and actually was very enlightened um, to learn that the golden child didn't have it quite that easy as, as I thought that she did. Um, so let me, I want to break it down to you and, and kind of uh, explain to you why being the golden child actually really isn't so golden. In families where there are several children, one child is usually chosen as the scapegoat and it's, they serve as the family's trash can for all the narcissistic rage of the parent. The other child um, is usually the one that's most closely resembling the narcissistic parent or the one who most serves the narcissistic parent's need for narcissistic supply and they become the golden child. In other words, they become the parent's favorite. The scapegoat is always deemed as wrong, bad, stupid, crazy, and, and the problem. And the golden child, well, it's as the name suggests. It's the best and most wonderful child, at least in the eyes of the narcissistic parent. And it seems that that child can't do anything wrong. And they also are an extension of the narcissistic parent, which in case that this case it was my it was my mother who was the narcissist, and so my sister became an extension of her, where uh, my mom would actually lived her life through my sister, and they become they can also the golden child can also become the narcissist's uh, flying monkey, and even given sometimes the honor of abusing. And helping with the abuse of the scapegoat child. The golden child though usually ends up very engulfed by the narcissistic parent and their life ends up being enmeshed. They'll grow up without boundaries, uh, proper self-identity, and they're likely to remain forever or for a long time as a puppet of the narcissistic parent and it's hard for them to break free and if they do ever break free from that usually that process is more painful for the golden child than it is for the scapegoat child because the golden child is enmeshed with the parent and they they're getting that love and adoration where the scapegoat child has already detached and has become more independent so growing up as the scapegoat it can understandably be you can become very, very jealous of the golden child and that's because you know they're getting all the love their attention the best of everything and you know they can do no wrong and that was the case for me is I thought you know my sister could do no wrong no matter what she did it was always swept under the rug or I got the blame for it um, I can remember one time when I was really little and uh, th my dad had got us a sticker at the Kroger um, out of the little gumball machines and my sister took it and placed it on the closet door and my mom came in and was just enraged about it and she blamed me for it and I kept trying to tell her that you know I didn't do it I didn't do it and I even went up there and was like I can't reach it and you know after my mom whipped me um, and kept telling me to stop lying after it was all over with my sister went over there and touched it and said I did it and so you know I was mad at her I was mad at her because I got in trouble for something that I didn't do but that's typically and, and then she didn't get in any, any trouble whatsoever my mom just dismissed it and so that was the beginning of you know conflict between my sister and I um, because it is a divide and conquer and lots of opportunities opportunities for triangulation and the golden child can be encouraged by the narcissistic parent to either overtly or tactically bully the scapegoat and this just adds to the friction and you know what I was enlightened about on this trip was that I didn't realize the pain that my sister suffered of having to be the golden child having to um, be my mom's parents be her therapist be her go-to person um, you know she told me that there were times that you know because my dad's an, my dad was an alcoholic and there were times that my mother would send her into the bars to go get him because she knew that he would come or when my dad would come home 
you know, intoxicated, my sister would be the one that would have to take care of him or make sure that, you know, he was in a good mood because <clears throat> oftentimes if he wasn't, he went into a rage. And so my mom put all of that on my sister and she was pretty young when that happened. And, and I didn't realize what pain that she had suffered. And, you know, one of the things, too, that she told me that it was always hard to, to be perfect, to always hard to be what my mother always wanted her to be. And, you know, as she got older, it just became worse. And so there was a lot of pressure on her. Um, and when she tried to move away, it, it didn't work. I mean, my mom would call her every day. Um, and then she moved back back into town. Um, and my mom uh, basically took over, you know, in a lot of ways with her children, um, where she kept them all the time at her request. She'd keep them for days on end. And I, although, you know, at times it was a help for my sister, but it was just like my mom was so engulfed and so enmeshed into her life that she really didn't have a life of her own. She was, my mother was living her life through her. And so it was really hard for my sister um, to, you know, to finally step away from that. And I don't think that it actually really happened until my mom passed away, um, where she was able to actually find herself and become who she was truly meant to be. Um, and so having that knowledge really released a lot of the resentment that I had towards my sister because I didn't realize the actual hell that she went through um, as a kid. I thought it was just me. Um, and so that just goes to show you that the golden child really has in a lot of ways, has it a lot worse than the scapegoat. Although they're not getting beat or they're not being the, you know, the, the brunt of the punishment from the narcissistic rages, but it's just as damaging for the golden child than it is for the scapegoat. And the scapegoat actually has an advantage because they're always they're already detached from the parents, so it's easier for them to get away and to leave. So what happens when there's only one child in the family? Well, that child becomes the scapegoat and the golden child. And being both scapegoat and golden child is even more crazy making than being just the scapegoat or being just the golden child because you never know where you stand. You constantly feel off balance and anxious, and you never know if something that you said or did will be rewarded, ignored, or punished. You feel like you're playing a game and that you never wanted to play, and you don't even know the rules. And hell, you don't even know what game that you're playing, but you're expected to be the expert at it. So I hope that my explanation and, and some insight into the reality of the golden child in a narcissistic family, what their role is, has helped you understand and maybe will help you be kinder and gentler with your sibling who you uh, may have resentments towards because you thought that they had it better than you did.